Hey coders and welcome to episode 3 of our Dart Season playlist on the Flutter course. In this episode we're going to be taking a closer look into how loops and conditionals work within the Dart programming language. Loops are one of those things that distinguish and separate programming from just being a glorified calculator. So loops are sections of code that are repeated a set number of times. So you have your for loops, your for in loops, your while loops, and your do while loops. We'll see examples of all of these within the code coming shortly, but for now let's switch on over to the next slide. And along with loops you have conditionals. Now conditionals are sections of code that only run if a certain condition is met. So you have your if statements, your if else statements, and then the if else if else statements. And the syntax for Dart conditionals is exactly the same as for JavaScript conditionals. So if you're familiar with JavaScript, then it's exactly the same. It shouldn't be hard at all to pick it up. All right, let's jump on over to the code and see some examples of loops and conditionals. Let's say that you just had a birthday party and you want to send out thank you notes to all of your guests on your guest list. And you plan on doing this by using the decades old trick of writing one thank you note, sending them out to everyone, just changing the name on each individual's thank you note. So right here I have some data on the guest list. It is a list of maps and each of those maps maps a string to a dynamic data type. As you can see right here, here's our list. Each one of the elements is a map with the curly brackets. And then we have keys that are strings and values that are dynamic. Say this one is a string, but this one is a Boolean. So we have to declare that as a dynamic because it could be either string or it could be whatever really. All right, so how can we list through or how can we loop through this list sending everyone their thank you note card? Well, we can do that either through a for loop or a while loop. So let's start off with this for loop. This is a more traditional standard way of writing a for loop. You'll find this in many programming languages. You'll have the for keyword and then you'll have the three statements. So just as a quick refresher, the first statement is what you declare initially at the beginning of the for loop. And then the second statement is a conditional that determines whether you're going to enter into the for loop. If this is true, then you'll start at the top of the for loop again and, and execute the co code block. And then this last statement is what you'll run at the end of the for loop. So let's see, we're, we're starting i equals zero. So zero is definitely less than four, the length of the guest list. So it's gonna start executing this code block and then we're gonna get the zeroth index of the guest list, which is right here, Courtney. We're gonna end the for loop. We're going to increment i, start back at the top of the for loop and see if we re-enter the for loop by checking this conditional. Since i was incremented to one, it should be one less than four, that's still the case, so it will re-enter back into the loop. So let's run that now to see that in action. All right, so we have four separate lines again. So this for loop ran four times. And then after the fourth time, then it incre incremented i to four. And then four is not less than four, so it just uh, exited the for loop. So that is again the more traditional standard way of doing the for loop, but there's an also, also a different variation of the for loop called the for in loop. Now, in my opinion, this is a lot more intuitive and I use this a lot more frequently. Uh, so let me explain that right now. With a for in loop, you just have one expression. You say for map guest in, you use the keyword in and then your list. So this is my guest list right here. So basically the difference is that the for in loop will actually get the entire element that it's iterating on in your list. So you're gonna store that as a map Right, because this element is a map. Now, now with a with a more standard for loop, you're really just getting the index of your iteration. But with a for in loop, you're getting the entire element itself. So that's really cool because you can actually uh, you can actually get the properties off of that element right off the bat. So that's a for in loop. We could just print out one statement. Uh, within the code block and we could run these two for loops like exactly the same but let's make this one a little bit more complicated let's say that we want to uh, we want to 
uh, change the message of our thank you note based on certain data about that person. So we're going to write some if and else statements, right? And this if else statement is a very uh, common way of doing this. Uh, there's no tricks with Dart. It's basically if you have programming experience with JavaScript or any other programming language, uh, if else statements in Dart run the exact same way. So, and that is basically we're gonna check if this condition is true. If it is, then we're gonna run the code block within the else statement. So we're gonna run this right here. However, if it's not true, then we're gonna move, we're gonna keep moving on in the in the code block and then test the next condition. And if this is true, then we'll run this code block. If it's not true, then the last thing is this else statement. And then we're gonna run this code block right here, this line of code. Now you should pay special attention to this keyword right here, continue, because it's very important for loops. Basically, when a when the code runs into this line of code right here, continue or this keyword right here, then it will stop wherever wherever it is within the iteration and then just automatically move into the very next iteration. So right now it's at the bottom of the for loop, so it doesn't really do much here, but this is just a good keyword to, to understand what it does. So let me just run that right now so we can see that in action again. And there we go, so Courtney, had a gift enclosed and she attended, so we executed this line of code and she got that extra sentence at the end of her uh, thank you note. However, with Dylan and Bella, they both attended, as you can see, but they did not bring a gift. So this line of code right here did not get executed for them, uh, but this one did, right? And it printed out this. However, when we got to Nathan, Nathan neither attended nor had a gift that he brought. So neither of these code blocks ran, and he just moved down to this one and continued the for loop. However, it was the end of the guest list, so it just broke out of the for loop. All right, so that is for loops. Now let's look at while loops. While loops are very similar to for loops. Um, so basically, this is how a while loop goes. It, it first checks a condition, and if that condition is true, then it executes the code block within the while loop. So it, what we're doing right now is we're saying if guest list is not empty, which we can see it definitely is not empty, right? There are four different elements in it. Then we're going to enter into the while loop and print out this statement right here. Then after we print it out, we're going to use this built-in method right here, remove at, which is uh, specific for lists and then we're going to be removing the element at index zero. So we're basically just gonna be uh, taking this element right out, we're gonna be excising it completely from this list, and then now the list will be length of three, so it's still not empty, uh, so it'll, it will go back into the while loop and run another iteration of this code block. So let's see that in action. And as we'd expect, this ran four times, and then after Nathan or after uh, Nathan's uh, iteration ran, then it removed the last um, uh, the last map in the list, and then the guest list was indeed empty, so it broke out of the while loop. All right, so that is the more traditional while loop. The the next uh, variant of the while loop is the do while loop. Now the only difference between the do while loop and the and the more traditional while loop is that the more traditional while loop uh, checks the condition first and then executes the code in the code block. However, the do while loop first executes the code in the code block and then it checks the condition. So I really don't use do while that often. The only time when I would want to use do while is if I wanted to execute the code in the code block at least once, right? Because theoretically, this code could not be executed at all, right? If, if the condition is false from the get-go, then it will immediately break the while loop and it won't even execute this at all. So let's see what I'm trying to do here in the do while loop. It looks like I am sending out thank you notes or I'm simulating that sending out thank you notes through an internet and HTTP request. And if that response code is equal to 200, which means we had a success, then I'm going to be printing this out and then changing the variable success to true. 
And then that's going to change this. We're going to break out of the while loop and then end the script. However, if I were to change the response code to say like 400, then the response code, this will not run because the response code is not equal to 400 and this else conditional will run. So that's going to print error. It's going to increment our retries variable. So it looks like if we retried it 10 times, then we're just gonna break out of the while loop. Now this break keyword is also very important, kind of like the continue. The only difference between these two keywords is that continue will just break out of the iteration and go on to the next iteration. However, break will continue out of the entire loop itself. So it doesn't really matter what iteration it's on. Once this line of code gets run, it will break out of the entire while loop and continue on uh, with the rest of the script. So let's see that in action. If we hit run, then we see that we get 10 different times that we tried to send the thank you notes. And then after the 10th time, after the 10th retry, we broke out of the while loop and just finish the script right here. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you learned something new about loops and conditionals. If you did and you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next episode.